This workflow video demonstrates how you can use Visicon to coordinate your tendon placement with other disciplines. The scenario we're going to go through is you're working on your PT design project. You've been asked to coordinate your complex post-tensioning layout with other disciplines on your project. The structural, mechanical, and other disciplines are using Revit for their BIM. I'll be primarily demonstrating the monostrand system, but Visicon supports the full range of multi-strand anchors as well. On the project, you would have multiple uh, engineers working in different systems. The structural engineer would be using Adapt Builder to design their slabs and lay out their post-tensioning. The newer versions of Builder allow you to lay out your tendons with the exact horizontal sweep as you, uh, as you wish. We have a structural Revit model and we might have mechanical and other uh, discipline models in Revit. You're not limited to just Revit models. Any system or BIM that's modeled in a format that can be exported in IFC can also be in incorporated into this coordination. The process is that we would then export the information from all of these various programs and merge them for final coordination within a centralized Visicon model. To give you a quick example, we'll start by looking at our two source models. Here's our Revit structure model. To prep the model, I would have gone to the Visicon tab, use the full export to create a Visicon file. Next, let's take a look at the builder file. The builder model is where we would have modeled all of our tendons. To prepare this model for transfer, I go to File, Export, and use the Visicon file exchange format. I've already prepped both of those files, and they're in this folder. We're going to start by opening up the Visicon file. This includes just the Revit structure model. So here's our Revit structure model. To merge it with the Adapt tendons, we go to Merge into Model, New select the tendons file and if we look at this level we can now see that the tendons have been merged with the Revit model in Visicon. We can do simple things like take a clip plane and investigate now exactly where our tendons are located. So here you can see exactly what's uh, what's going on in this beam. I'll turn off the clip plane and we'll go to ghost mode. So this way we can get a better sense of our tendon layout in the slab. To continue working on this level, we're gonna to go to home, go to level mode. I'm gonna to switch to level mode by floors and go to the level that has our tendons, which was level 13. So we can look at this, this model and what you can observe is that each of the tendons that was modeled in ADAPT is brought over and expanded further to include the actual anchor locations. We've seen some instances here where we have a bundle of two. There's no further modification that's needed. However, what we're going to uh, look at now are all the different options you have to lay out your tendons. To clear the screen, I'm going to just turn off my base and let's take a look at one of these tendons. We'll look at this, this band here that runs through this beam. I'm going to use tab to select it. And we're going to first look at how the tendon can be modified from this faraway perspective. If I scroll down at its properties, we can first see that it has a post-tensioning system. It can either be a monostrand flat bundle, a round bundle. So what that does, is it just kind of groups all of tendons together. That's mainly for, for beams. We can do a rectangular multi-strand system or a round multi-strand system. And at the end, we'll come in and, and I'll just show you what those examples are. We're going to go with the monostrand flat bundle. You can select your anchor type. So if we zoom in a little further, we can have the half-inch standard anchor or the half-inch encapsulated. We'll go with the half-inch encapsulated. That increases the size of the anchor a little bit. In the ADAPT file, it had already been set to a strand count of 12. So in this case, it's a monostrand system. So that represents 12 individual spar tendons. Bundle spacing. So this is in the so there are three zones. There's the bundled zone, there's a transition zone, and then there's the anchor zone. So this this determines how the individual tendons are laid out in the bundled zone. So for example, if I increase this to four, it's laying out all the tendons with an average spacing of four diameters. So this gives you flexibility to be able to lay out your tendons like what you're going to see on the job site to help you develop a more coordinated and realistic model. In our case, we'll say on average, you know, for the width of these tendons, that's what it's going to be. We're going to scroll down and you can see that each anchor has additional 
characteristics. We have a start anchor and an end anchor. I know that this is my start anchor and that's the end anchor. So the end anchor we're going to keep as one layer horizontally. We're just going to focus on configuring the start anchor right here. So you can see it goes horizontal. I can also change the anchor type to vertical. So let's go ahead and keep it as horizontal. I can determine how many layers. So I'm going to say well, three layers and I can specify the spacing. So here the horizontal spacing, I might make it a little tighter. So I go seven and my vertical spacing because I'm trying to pack them in tighter at four and a half inches, let's say. So this would now represent the spacing, proposed spacing of my 12 anchors at the end of this beam. Further, I can offset so I can go into. So for example, 12 pushes this out or pushes it in. So this just gives you the ability to, you know, fine tune the layout for your coordination model. And you can also do, so these are X, Y looking at the end of the anchor zone. And then the other one is Z. So if I go 12 inches here, you can also shift these to the left or to the right. Again, all configuration points to help you develop a more realistic model. We talked about the transition length. So you can see it's defaulted to six feet. I can make this tighter. So this just means that the tendons are splayed over a three foot length, or I can make it longer, in which case splay out and then go to their bundled configuration further back. So this gives you a good sense of how you can lay out your various tendons. In addition, you can do markups, measurements, and all kinds of other uh, Visicon activities on the uh, anchor block. Just for interest, we'll go ahead and switch this to a multi-strand system just so that you can see what that would look like. So here we could go, for example, to a round multi-strand system, and this would allow you to configure it for either bridge construction or different type. We also support the flat typical types of construction. So this gives you a good overview of how you can lay out your tendons from ADAPT, merge them with the Revit model, and within the same Visicon file, you would be able to come in and do a merge into and bring in, for example, the mechanical and other uh, discipline models to come up with a fully coordinated model. Thank you for listening.